I got to tell you something. I have the best job that was ever invented by anybody. I'm responsible for the integrity of all the spacecraft that leaves the Earth's sphere of influence to go out and explore the planets. And today we're going to share a little bit about the history of our understanding about what's going on on Mars. And I'm going to start off with a little perspective. So let's realize for a moment where we are in history. At no time in the past could anybody stand up here and tell you about the exploration of the solar system. You and I belong to the only generation that will ever do it for the first time. And after we are through exploring the solar system, we won't be through, but after we touch all the places, there will be a big gap. Let me just give you a few simple numbers. The moon, you know, the moon's roughly 250 million miles away. Mars, depending on where it is in its orbit, is somewhere between 120 and 500 times as far away. And to go to the edge of the solar system, to the, out to Pluto, is roughly 12,000 trips to the moon. The next place after the solar system is a long way away. In fact, a recent Gallup poll showed that only 2% of the people in the United States of America had any idea how far away the nearest star was. Stephen Hawking, who is a brilliant man, he's a colleague, I know him well, said we should not try to contact extraterrestrials. Nobody understood what he was saying. It's not because they would be malevolent. It is because it is likely in a statistical sense that if we ran into other extraterrestrials, extraterrestrials, they would be so much farther advanced than we are. Imagine a million years past where we are. Imagine 10 million years. Arthur C. Clarke, my partner in science fiction, has a wonderful statement. It's known as Arthur C. Clarke's third law. The technology of a sufficiently advanced extraterrestrial civilization would be indistinguishable from magic. And so it is that at this particular point in our lives, you and I have questions that are not answered. We have a chance to reach out and to try to touch them, to try to understand them, to try to experience them. And what they are all about is one and only one question. Who are we? Where did we come from? Where are we going? And my Red Prairie friends, what I wanted to do today is to catalyze some out-of-the-box thinking. Because in everything that we do, in our work, in your work, it is the thought outside the box that leads to the new discoveries. It leads to the new innovations. And thinking about where we are and where we came from and whether or not there's life on Mars or intelligent life elsewhere in the universe lifts us out of our everyday basic structure and allows us to think about new things. One of my son's teachers asked him, what does your father do? And for a moment he couldn't answer and he finally sputtered out, he adds to human knowledge. I grabbed my son and I hugged him. And I said, there could be no greater statement about what it is we do in life than to add to human knowledge. And I have come here today to share my enthusiasm for that, and I hope that you have had an interesting time with me. Bye. Thank you.